Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about an Oakland legend, a real town boss, Felix the Cat Mitchell. Felix was born on August 23rd, 1954 in Oakland and was raised in the notorious San Antonio Village Housing Project in East Oakland, which has now been torn down and remodeled. In the 60s and the early 70s, Oakland streets had more structure with the Panthers having a big influence in the African-American communities. They kept dealers out the streets and also promoted a lot of peace, having different programs for kids and also for adults. But by the mid 70s, they were disbanded. The Panthers policed their own communities, but with them not being around, a lot changed, causing more violence and less structure. In the 70s, Felix Mitchell would get his start in the streets. He first started off selling smack as a teenager and after a few years, he dropped out of high school and jumped head first into the streets. After a few years, Felix would start to rise in the game and become a young boss. Him and the crew he grew up with made the 6ix9ine mob. From then it was on. Felix and the 6ix9ine mob flooded their project. Felix ran his projects like he was Nino Brown. It is said the movie New Jack City could be based off him. Felix ran a tight ship and wasn't just letting anybody come inside the projects or the mob's turf. He had to be from the hood, be a resident, or be a fiend. Felix even had kids as lookouts for cops and enemies. Like I said, he was really on point. But being a boss of his stature, you would have to. As Felix was pushing work all through his community, many people would say he tore his community down. But a lot would also say he helped a lot, giving back to a lot of families and giving back to the kids. Over the years, Felix's money started to rise. I mean, on another level. He let his show get in luxury cars like Roy's Royces, Ferraris, even buying luxury homes throughout the Bay and LA. You know what all this money? Brett had all the little thoughts back in the day. Felix's business booming, he connected and expanded all over, going to other cities and also other states. I mean, this dude was getting millions. Even with Felix living a lavish lifestyle, making all that money and having all the little thotties, he wasn't off limits. It wasn't immune to beef. He had some heavy opposition with dudes like Funktown Harv from Funktown and Mickey Moore of the family who was an R&B singer, then turned dealer. He probably was like Lamar from BMF singing You Can't Stop the Rain. But these dudes were serious and also about their business and they didn't mind going to war. Felix and his crew wasn't backing down. The 6 9 mob and the family would be in a back and forth war with bodies being dropped on both sides. This would call police attention and prompted several investigations. All this occurred in 1980. August of 80 was called Bloody August. Three associates of the family was popped up by the 6ix9ine mob. This was well known, and actually the 6ix9ine mob was bragging about it. This led to more bodies dropping, and Oakland police beginning to crack down. In 1983, it was 2,000 more arrests compared to 1982. After years of investigation, by 1985, police had enough evidence to arrest Felix, and his charges were tax evasion, continuing criminal enterprise, and conspiracy. By June of 1985, Felix was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Some of Felix's crew would be taken down as well. Also, Mickey Moore, Felix's rival and his crew also got arrested. Oakland PD thought sentencing Felix to life was going to help the community, but it actually made it worse. It made less structure and created more of a fight of who was going to take over the streets next, causing more violence and bodies being dropped. Felix was sent to Levensworth Prison in Levensworth, Kansas to do his life sentence, but in 1986, he was stabbed, taking his life just a few days shy of his birthday. Felix funeral was held on August 29th of 1986. Let's just say the hood showed up and showed out. They sent him home like a real G and the boss he was. People flooded the streets and foreign cars and limousines were all over the roads. Police even attended the funeral. The police watched his funeral from the sideline in the Ferrari that he had. They seized it in the raid and also brought it to the funeral as they watched his crew and seeing who was gonna be next to charge. Little D, Felix's son's cousin began to make a big name for himself shortly after, continuing the family business. Little D also lived a lavish lifestyle and had many connections, even dealing with LA legends like Rick Ross. But by 1988, Little D was arrested and sentenced, and the streets got even crazier. Little D is now free after doing 28 years. He was even pardoned by Obama. Mickey Moore, the leader of the family, and Felix's ex-rival, got out of jail and became a pastor. He even put out his own book. Felix Mitchell isn't alive anymore, but he left his mark in Oakland, and he still gets talked about today and heavily mentioned in circles around the world. Felix was a street legend, and this was his story. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button. 
and drop a comment and let me know what you want to see next. Don't forget to subscribe.